All right, so uh, welcome back. Uh, just to help keep tabs, at this point, we are looking at section 13-3 uh, uh, from your text. Now, as a review, the purpose of meiosis is uh, to reduce the chromosome number by half. Uh, in the production of gametes. Because if we think about it, you know, here we know we are uh, diploid organisms with 46 chromosomes, two sets of 23 uh, chromosomes. So if one parent has 46 chromosomes, the other parent has 46 chromosomes. If the air diploid cells combine, you'd wind up with a zygote that has 92 chromosomes. That's non-viable. So we need a process to go from being diploid cells uh, with 46 chromosomes to creating haploid gametes or sex cells that have just 23 chromosomes so that when fertilization occurs you wind up with a zygote or new offspring that has 46 chromosomes. So again thinking back to the uh, sexual life cycle diagrams we drew here we have the meiosis creating the haploid gametes to pave the way for fertilization that combines the gametes to form offspring that have the same number of chromosomes as the parents. So, uh, to look at this visually, let's create a germ cell. Again, these are the cells that undergo uh, meiosis to uh, create the gametes or sex cells. So here's our germ cell. Uh, we'll call this G1 of interphase. Now, we'll have a chromosome from biological mom and a chromosome from biological dad. Now, recall that these are uh, referred to as homologous chromosomes or homologs uh, similar in size, shape, and banding pattern and they'll have some similarities in uh, the uh, alleles that they share. Alright, now during S phase you're going to copy or replicate that genetic information. So here we're going to have replicated chromosomes. Again, it's still just two chromosomes but, the cop but that information on each chromosome has now been copied. So you have uh, homologous chromosomes, still two homologous chromosomes, um, but the chromosomes have been replicated uh, and these are referred to as sister chromatids. So two identical copies of information. Now, uh, also worth noting at this point is that if we look, here you have two sets uh, of this chromosome. That's a diploid cell. You look here, still two copies of this chromosome. So this is still a diploid cell. Now, <clears throat> meiosis will take these diploid cells and uh, divide them. So uh, during the process of meiosis one, we're going to take these two diploid cells and divide them. Now, uh, meiosis one is sometimes called or referred to as reduction division. And that is uh, appropriate because what you do when the cell divides is uh, you reduce the number of chromosomes in each cell by half as you divide one original cell into two new cells. So again, you go from two, two uh, copies of a chromosome in the cell to just one copy of the chromosome in the cell. So as a result, we now have haploid cells. So you go from being diploid cells uh, to now haploid cells. Now the events of meiosis uh, are similar to uh, that, uh, or share similarities to those steps in uh, mitosis. So we do have a PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, but we refer to it as prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, uh, so because since there are two rounds of cell division. So again, uh, steps similar to that of um, mitosis, but we refer to them as prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. Now during uh, meiosis 2, we're going to take these two cells that were created during meiosis 1 and divide these cells 
Now when that happens, what you're going to do is separate sister chromatids. So in meiosis 1, you are separating homologous chromosomes. Here in meiosis 2, you're going to separate sister chromatids. And again, the series of steps are prophase 1, I'm sorry, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. Uh, now, the cells that we end up creating down here are the gametes or the sex cells. And uh, again, it's worth mentioning that these cells are, uh, yet again, uh, haploid. So we go from one diploid cell, divide that diploid cell into two haploid cells, and then in meiosis two, separate sister chromatids to create four haploid gametes uh, or sex cells. Now, in summary, I'd very strongly encourage you to review pages uh, 254 and 255 in your textbook. These two pages have much more detailed information uh, related to the events of meiosis one and meiosis two. Uh, you will be responsible for being familiar with uh, what happens during these uh, different stages of meiosis. So please make sure you spend time reviewing that. Uh, when you review that, pay particular attention to the events of prophase one. Also, make sure you compare metaphase one and metaphase two and anaphase one and anaphase two. So again, pay close attention to what happens during those events. I'm trying to give you a heads up uh, because there will be questions asked in the quiz and test that look at the relationships between uh, these different steps uh, in meiosis.